filled with airplane peanuts. He fucking did a lot of creepy things down there, man. Uh, rest in peace, you know. He was good to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of creepy things. Rest in peace. <laughs> Eulogy <laughs> <Who would you> ever. <laughs> he did a lot of creepy things. It wasn't good. Rest in peace. Yeah, he was a creepy he fuck. He was living so. with his brother. If you <laughs> s- poor guy. If you said that at the memorial service, I would die. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he did a lot of creepy things. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. He's a real piece of shit. Rest in peace. I, never, I never could tell if his hair was his. Rest in peace. Doc, don't you ever, you ever go to a funeral and the guy's talking, like they give a memorial in the back of your head, you're like, this is such a bullshit. Last time oh, I saw yeah. this guy was doing blow yeah. off a stripper's ankle. Yeah. And, and this kid, he's a loving father, sure. Uh, yeah. You should have seen him that night. <laughs> How much you love this kid when he had his tongue up that fucking yam's fucking asshole with coke on it. (laughs) All those loving fathers, they always are the dirtiest motherfuckers in the world. How about catheters? Have you ever had that in? Like for oh, I just did a colonoscopy on August fourth, and it was nothing. Again, I felt the needle a little bit. It was just hot in there. When I was (laughs) hospitalized like years ago, when I OD'd. Yeah, that's right. you wake up and everything's right. You don't remember them putting anything in. So I had a catheter in. But I didn't, it was fine. I didn't feel anything. But a nurse tripped over the tube. And I was like, <laughs> oh, like I screamed. I was like, what the? And she, and I, cause she goes, it's not supposed to go like that. That was her apology. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, I, I stepped on it. And that's why it like yanked on you. It was the fucking most painful thing. And her way of handling it was just not supposed to go that way. <laughs> I, I think I knew that. I Fuck. got blind drunk with what's the the old the guy that was running Houston Improv the Diggy La La that, that no, guy no, no not not a uh, Trey. No, no, the no. creepy guy. The no. creepy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a creepy fuck. No, the creepy guy's dead. The other guy. No, 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 no. He's a creepy fuck. They they sent him to Arlington. He's the rapist. He's the tree oh, jumper. Jeez, I wasn't saying yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. They put him. They put him in. They put him in Arlington. <laughs> you know, Dan Murr was a fucking dirty coke. No. <laughs> like a like a filthy coke fiend, and he. <laughs> He would get so coked up that you think he had a stroke. His oh. lip would turn, like his lip would just oh. go upwards. Oh, so one night, everybody for years, one night when I had the really bad sleep apnea, and I really wasn't sleeping, and I didn't know what, uh, I didn't know what the. God damn it. <laughs> Did rest in peace. I, yeah, I didn't know what the sleep apnea, what the effects were yet. Uh-huh. I passed out one night really hard, and all of a sudden I wake up to the door banging, and it's Joe Rogan pre-marijuana when he was fucking miserable. <laughs> I always say he was an ape. You ever see the evolution of an ape? Uh-huh. That's when he was an ape. Yeah. If you didn't know Joe pre marijuana, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was like a spurts. There was something missing. Thank God Eddie talked him into that because you didn't know what he was anti drug. Yeah. Anti fucking drug. You know, if 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 Bert came over and the next day he called me. You know, Bert Kreischer had like 16 fucking beers. He's got a bad problem, you know. And he would just say that. I remember we went to see Doug Stanhope. That's how it started. And he's like, fucking Doug is funny, but somebody's got to talk to him about his alcoholism. I'm like, Joe, nobody says things like that. Like, nobody. I go, why would you say that? He goes, why would I say that? He had 11 beers and four shots of tequila on stage. That's how uptight Joe Rogan used to be. Guys, I don't even wow. recognize that guy. No, wow. no. I did an edible the other night that was so fucking strong that my wife woke me up at 20 to 2 on the couch. And I thought she goes, you had a look on your face like I was a demon. <laughs> I go, bro, I was, I passed out and was dreaming about food. You were? Like when she woke me up, I was like, oh my God, thank God you woke me up. I was having a dream about shit. She went in the kitchen and filled up a water bottle at 20 to 2. And I walked straight to the kitchen, opened up the fucking cabinet, and there was a half a jar of Pringles. I just started Pringling it. I just ate the fucking Pringles. Then I made a ham and cheese sandwich. I ate that, and then I went right to bed. I was so fucking high. Like, the next morning, I woke up, and I saw the American cheese. Because when they slice yeah, at the yeah. butcher, he puts paper in it. Uh-huh. And I saw it. Th- I go, who ate the cheese last I go, oh, my God. I ate the fucking cheese last night. How strong was the edible? 100 milligrams. It's stronger than death. Oh, my God. I took Dude. two of them to New York. <laughs> to shoot this movie and I took one of them one night when I had insomnia slept like a baby 
And then beyond that, I took on the flight back. You took the 100 milligram on the flight back? On the flight back. And I started freaking out that the plane was going to go down. <laughs> and then they pulled the plane over to the side because of the rain in the Midwest. And they kept saying, if we don't leave in 30 seconds, and 30 minutes, we're probably going to have to cancel a flight till tomorrow morning. I'm high as a fuck. And I'm thinking, maybe I took the wrong plane. I switched. And maybe because I was supposed to leave Saturday. Morning. You're out of your mind at this point. <clears throat> out of my mind. I'm an hour in with earphones. The plane was at the gate for half hour and they made the edible go up. And then we drove around all over fucking New York City with Kennedy Airport. We were cutting off Ubers. I'm like, where the fuck is this plane going? And I, I saw little Arabs pulling over to the side. Fuck you. I'm trying to drive Uber X. <laughs> We're in that fucking plane after a half hour. I'm thinking we're in the air. This is how <laughs> high I am, Tom Segura. Jesus, man. Now, Direct TV, you know, Mint. Uh, yeah. Jet Blue has yeah. the Direct TV. Yeah. So I'm not watching the TV. I'm focused on the radio, and I'm thinking we're in the air. And I open up, and I see 20 other planes. I go, where the fuck are we? <laughs> we have been driving for an hour. We Seriously? Been, I don't know where he went around Kennedy Airport. <laughs> we're flying around for fucking an hour. And I'm like, where the fuck is this pilot going? I thought we were in the air already. I swear <laughs> to my hilarious. daughter's grave, I was so high, I thought we were in the fucking I took air. I took 20 milligrams on my last flight to New York, and that was too fucking much for me. Really? 20 yeah. milligrams will do something to you? For do something. Yeah. I took 50 on the flight there. No, nah, man. I was fucked up. I was really? fucked up, dude. You got to eat half of this with He's... the wine that goes fucking perfecto. <laughs> He's this, four or five I'll deep. You, I'm Are like, you serious? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to eat half of this three quarters. You know, I went, you know I went to Joey's store with <laughs> Why are you doing more of that? I, Joey, I'm not eating it, buddy. That's no. Like 10 milligrams. Joey, Joey. You have a little pep Joey, in your step. No. You know what I'm saying? No. Get you have loose. a little pep in your step. You Guys, Trip Flip Airs on Travel Channel June 2nd. <laughs> If you don't eat it, Leo have to eat it. Lee, 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 Lee. 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 I've only had one and a half. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? You can't walk on one leg. Who walks around with a leg and a half? Nobody. Uh, Come on, go for it, Lee. Lee. There it is, right? Give it, give it, give it, give it. We'll split it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you didn't split any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy. How hard was it to quit, Coke? It was uh, easy because I was done. You were already like I was choice. done. I couldn't. Yeah. At that point, I had a lot of variables. Why? And it was a lot easier than people think. I was done. <clears throat> but once I just, I missed. Uh, I realized that I wasn't getting high to get. In, it wasn't enjoyable no more. Like, like marijuana right now, I could see it falling off the map any day now. Really? Yeah, I could see myself. I could see myself. Just doing edibles or something <laughs> to calm me down for a while, just to say but the little bit of lung I got left. Oh, it stopped smoking. It doesn't take a genius to know I got the beginnings of emphysema. You know, like you know, you don't have to be a genius. So you can do it then. Do that, man. Save yeah, your lungs. No, no. And that's what uh, with cocaine, it was the same thing. I just knew that when you, uh, I was doing cocaine for so long that I was getting jolts in my spine at the end of the night, jolts of electricity, like. Castro's oh, yeah, men hitting is, you with a zap. That is terrifying. And that's dude. not good. That's Jesus not good. Jesus Christ. That means so you're like, yes. Yeah, that means, and I was getting one a night, you know, once a week, and then it started to get two a night. That's fucking terrifying. Once I started to get two a night, I could just see my wife waking up to go pee and seeing my fat little legs in the kitchen laying there purple. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, and I said, I can't do it. So Jesus that was. Christ. Can you turn the bass down in my voice? It sounds a little tinny. Bring that beat back. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Ronnie B, like those big cigarette boats and yeah, and, like, yeah. cut off shirts like Hulk Hogan used to wear. Florida's maniacs, dude. It's a crazy yeah, state. It's really crazy. It's a really crazy state, and it's one of the, like it's like Nevada in the sense that like if you fuck off, if want to be like fuck off society, I'm kind of like I do shit on. I I bend a lot of rules. I'm yeah. kind of a fucking asshole. <laughs> like, it's a great state to thrive in, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, there's so many. The most scumbags I've ever met in my life was living in Florida. Really? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so many fucking scumbags. A lot of racists. A lot of racists. Yeah. A lot of everything. Yeah. yeah, a lot of everything. There's a lot of everything. It's a man. big, it's, it's a, a big high it's population. It's a pirate state. It's, it's been fucking getting mauled on since God knows when. Yeah. You know, you know Columbus was down there. I mean, it's just. <laughs> 
Jesus was down there. Everybody's been down there. Right before I, I started working out and stuff, you said, like, you got to let your blood drain through your legs. And ever since then, I keep seeing really big guys with, like, the permanent bruises and, like, oh. the like the skin eating away on their... On their st- oh. It's the most it horrific was, thing. I was I was there with my girlfriend at the grocery store. This dude was walking around, didn't even have pants on. He had just gym shorts, and was picking up bags of, of Lay's chips with his legs literally rotting away. And I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> you see it all the time. <laughs> yes. Where you want to go? Like, why is it okay for you to show me that? Like, where these these dudes have like it's their their leg is like a tree trunk yeah. where there's no and there's no like it's all the same size from fucking his thigh to his ankle and there's like these crazy open blood lines yeah. open sores Oof. you know I've worked to get my ankle that skinny yeah but I do the same shit every night do you, you work I get on my ass yeah and pop my legs up yeah I split I do a V I could fucking V on the wall now because I've been doing it I pick my legs up, I creep, I go to the side, I, I suck all this in, but I do the other side. And that, this that helps? helps to go to the bathroom, that's good for your digestive tract, cleans your kidneys, it's yoga shit. But the, the best move is your feet up, because the blood goes down. And now it gets processed, instead of getting purple in your fucking feet. Yeah. You know, if you don't do nothing, if you put your feet up and watch fucking daytime football all fucking day, and eat chips, that blood ain't going nowhere. These people you see at the airport walking around for you... You want to grab them and go, are you fucking serious? You say, I saw one with a tattoo. I don't know what it is with people with fat fucking legs that are purple putting that parrot on their leg. That's <laughs> going to throw you off. That money you spent for the ink, you could have spent that 24-hour fitness for a fucking trainer. You know, so you got your fat friend saying it's a, it's a cool parrot. Look at your fucking vein. Wait till the parrot blows. His head blows the fuck up. That was an easy weekend, fucking great time. What I was telling you was, that 1983, I was walking past the window one day. I was doing laundry on the Lord's Day. Minding my own fucking business. Not yeah. bomb, just doing laundry. Football was on. I wasn't in the mood. I was living in Snowmass Village, and I was in Creekside Apartments, and I'm walking. And I look at this window as I'm walking by, and the window's open, but there's a screen in front of it, but the door's right there. Yeah. All I have to do is stick my hand, rip the screen off, stick my hand, and I got this fucking fool's paradise. I knew the guy, I saw him early up at the fucking bar up at the Mexican place, and I knew there was some type of drugs in his house. Yeah. So I stuck my hand in there, went in, I got a chunk of hash, I got some jewelry, I got like 1500 in a rubber band, and I got uh, like ah, a couple grams of blow, you know, yeah. loose blow, a gram yeah. here, an eight ball here. Scatter. Miscellaneous blow. Miscellaneous blow, and I just pulled it together. And I ran out and I went home, and I buried the 15 grand. Yeah. And I took the jewelry and I put it in one of those safe. My buddy was a, a property manager uh, those days for some property management company. And I went to condos that were under construction. Yeah. And I would put all the stolen loot in the safes and we'd have the combination. That's the only way I got away with all that shit. Yeah. So they came to my house. There was nothing in my house. The blow I kept, that was going down. And the hash, I had a little spot under the closet where I had ripped up the carpet. And with a knife, I picked up the wood. It was like my little... I always, since I was a kid, I was always one of those creepy dudes that wanted to be James Bond. Yeah, yeah. I loved picking Hiding up floorboards. Yeah. yeah. I loved picking up floorboards and digging it out. I love all that crazy shit. To me, that was the easiest heist of my life, December 18th, 1983. I remember I called my buddy to say, hey, I'm sending you a package tomorrow. Look out for a chunk of half, some, some jewelry. Move the jewelry, and we'll split it 50-50. It was like a, a ton yeah. of jewelry. Yeah. I don't know if he goes, it's my birthday. I go, okay. And I made a mental note. So now every year, December 18th, <laughs> I call him on his birthday because of that robbery. My point, <laughs> my point is Vegas was easier than that. That's, nice. <laughs> Wait. that's how much of a good time I had in Vegas. And that's where you learn that strategy. That's why I love people going, dog, I couldn't follow him because you died before you even got on stage. Don't give him the limelight. Thank Tom Segura for coming on stage and attack him like a fucking pit bull for four minutes until they forget who the fuck Tom Segura even was. Don't forget, if you attack him hard, yeah. the first four minutes, Tom Segura don't even exist. They won't remember you on the, till the way out. Oh, remember him? He was funny too. And you're like, ah, oh, because you attacked him. I used to lose the war in my head. As a young comic, yeah. I would go, I can't follow that clean stuff. Look at all those people with white hair in the audience. Yeah, It's not till I eliminated that factor. 
I don't want to see the audience. I don't give a fuck who they are. Yeah, just go out there. Go out there and do your material. Because once you start catering and bantering, that's where you learn to bomb. Well, they're, they're, they're Chinese. They're, yeah. They're, they're, there goes this. Can you smell my feet? No. There goes this set. <laughs> you know, like if you go, I have a bunch of Chinese people. I'm going to do a, a set about the guy I rear-ended that was Chinese. <laughs> there goes that eight-minute bit. If you don't do that bit, you just lost in your head. You're totally right. Do that bit with all the confidence in the world that you have. Do that bit like if you were in front of 20 white people. In fact, I want you to turn to them as you do that bit. Because the more confidence you show, the more they're going to laugh their ass off. Because they're Chinese. They know they can't drive. They, they have a hard time walking around the airport. They all stop at the door at the airport. You ever go to, you ever, you ever like rushing to get to your gate? Yeah. They all stop and look around like, it's a, what the fuck are you looking at? Move. Move. The <laughs> fuck? This is the end to the exit. They want to sit there and look around. Man, this is 